With the release of The Last of Us Part 2 Remaster releasing on the 19th, I thought now would be a good time to talk about the rumoured Last of Us Part 3 after the cancellation of the multiplayer. I wanted to give my two cents about what the game should entail, things to keep, things to go, and how the story should play out. Let's start off with what I think needs to go. First off, I know the Abby section in the in the second game was essential to, to humanizing her character because uh, in the end we let her live. However, it was the most unenjoyable section of the game and lots of people agree. Um, we're, we're playing as the villain, we're playing as the person that we want to kill. And to me, she just came up as an ungrateful brat with no real character development other than leaving the, the, the wolves to help some seraphites. To be fair, after she was beaten down and tortured to become a broken shell of what she once was, she did realize that she didn't need revenge. She didn't need to kill Ellie after Ellie killed all her friends. And she has a child to care for. She has someone that she has to care for, right? So there was some amount of character development, but I kind of just ignored that because she was the villain of the game. The, the main issue with this is we see her as a monster, that's how she's portrayed. And we go and we, we go through all of her henchmen and eventually we kill them all off um, to get to Abby. And you, the issue is that as a player, we want nothing less than bloodshed. So when you make us play as Abby, at least in my case, you, you hate that because you're playing as the villain. You're, you're trying to or you're made to try and empathize with the villain. When you when you combine this with Ellie letting Abby go free at the end, you 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 have a dissatisfying ending. It, it, it's it's a tragic tale. However, I think that there were better ways that it could have been handled, like making Ellie kill Abby, which then causes her to go insane, would have been a good way to set the game up for a third game as she tries to recover from this and has to deal with the, the consequences of her actions. This would have made room for a good third installment in the series, while also keeping the dark and dreary ending that the second game has, with Ellie being left alone by the people that she loves the most. The other main issue for this game is what at least I think to be political correctness. Now it makes sense for Abby to be a strong, non-stereotypical woman in, in, the, in her circumstances, but I think Neil made Abby like this, first and foremost because he's a fan of the uh, feminist Anita Sarkeesian, who has done a lot of attacks on games. She's the author of amazing works of literature such as History vs. Women, The Defiant Lives They Don't Want You to Know. She also created the video series Tropes vs. Women in Video Games, and yes, I watched all 20 episodes, spanning from 10 minutes to 25. Now I promise I won't make this into a political channel, politics suck. But when they're brought into video games you have to talk about them. In the case of Abby, I think the in-universe reasoning was an afterthought, and instead because Anita hates the damsel in distress trope, and her influence probably, I think, influence the creation of Abby's character. But isn't Ellie the, the strong female protagonist that we needed? We already have her. And even in the first game, she shows herself to be entirely capable. Um, even after she witnesses horrific and traumatic sights, she is still able to hold herself, even when she probably isn't emotionally mature enough yet, or shouldn't be. And plus, the first game isn't even about Joel being Ellie's saviour, it's about Joel being the father figure that she needs. So why feel the need to have a masculine female a lead character when we already have a strong female character? Now of course with this criticism I don't care too much because in-universe it makes sense for her character to be like this. The same way it makes sense for Alloy in Horizon Forbidden West in Zero Dawn. However, I just don't think that the in-universe reasoning was immediately thought of. I think that, that was an afterthought. Something else that 
backs this up is Dina's character. She was created to be Jewish, and it's mentioned when they go into a chapel. However, they don't at all explore this very much, and it's kind of like they added her just to check off the Jewish box with characters, so they would have a more ethnically diverse set of characters, when they could have gone further into that and explored that, and that would have been really interesting to see that from a new perspective. So to recap, I don't want to play as Abby, because I don't care about her, I don't like her, I don't really want to see her. And it doesn't need to be politically correct. It's fine if you have a diverse set of characters, but you don't need to just tick off the diversity boxes. Make them interesting characters and explore their diversity. Now, despite my critiques of The Last of Us Part 2, there are lots of great things to talk about. I'm just going to talk about a few things. Continuing to explore heavy topics is something that needs to stay. We see her humanity unravel more and more as she leaves her family for vengeance. And the final fight of the game being this dirty, emotionally charged fight where Abby is just trying to survive and Ellie is trying to get revenge of the Joel. The fact that main characters will die immediately and there isn't a lot of grieving time I enjoy. Personally, I paused the game when there was something that I needed to reflect on, like Jesse's death, or the death of the couple in one of um, the flashbacks. It grounds the game, and if this continues into the third game, it'll allow them to further explore survivor's guilt, which Ellie has to deal with, after she learns that Joel saved her from, from the fireflies. Essentially, there are, there are lots of other things, like parody things, gameplay, um, the UI, those are all things that should stay, I think, that you can definitely expand on a lot of that as well. Go a bit further into stealth, I think adding the crawling mechanic uh, definitely helped with that. Um, going further into when enemies can see you, I think would be interesting to see how they do that. Um, of course, keeping the UI the same is something that should happen. It was really nice going from the second game to the third game and having everything be so familiar. Now, finally, I'm going to talk a little bit about the story. In this game, I think Ellie should be responsible for many more of the deaths of her friends. The third game should also move on from Joel, but it should still continue the trend of being merciless and killing off characters. I think the, the game should also take place over a long period of time. I didn't really like just seeing Seattle scenery for three days from Ellie's point of view and then three days from Abby's point of view. I much more preferred the first game where you went all over the country different periods of time as well. Like summer, spring, winter. Winter was a very big change and I enjoyed the snow and then spring after that where you see the zoo and the giraffes. I thought that was all really interesting and a welcome change. I reckon in the time period that the game should be set, there should be little civilizations popping up all around the place. And after Lev was talking to Abby about leaving America, I'm really interested to see how other countries fared, to see how they're going, to see if there are any countries that have fully built up their, their like, a government again and a actual society. Now, in terms of story, the first game was about how far will you go for love, the second game was about how far will you go for hate. The third game could be about how far will you go to mend things. It would involve having Ellie trying to mend things with Dina, JJ, Tommy and Maria. I think having Dina die before she can forgive Ellie would be good motivation for her to try and mend things with her other friends. JJ would play a huge part in this. Um, he would be rightly annoyed that Ellie left her, so that would um, give a good incentive. I think JJ should be a big part of this game. He would be rightly annoyed at Ellie for her leaving him, and it would be interesting to see how she tries to mend that relationship. As for Tommy, I think a playable Tommy section would be great. Um, in the first game, he wasn't super important in terms of his story 
in the second game, we see more of that. And in the third game, I would really like to see more of Tommy. I like him as a character, and I hope that the developers and writers do include that. Now, here's a interesting storyline that I found on Reddit from user G Guy here. <laughs> Jackson gets overrun by a giant horde of infected. Ellie and a few more survivors escape. You guide the whole pack of survivors through the country, trying not to lose anyone else while you recruit others to the group and find a new place to settle. It would be a completely new type of game with more emphasis on resource management for the group, protection for the weakest ones, etc. It would be an interesting type of game, however in terms of themes, I'm not sure exactly how it would delve into... Um, the the idea of how far will you go to mend things i'm sure that the writers could certainly do that and combine that type of gameplay with that story and it would be great to see however i'm not sure how it would happen now on a lighter note and as i begin to wrap up having more of uh, the guitar would be it, it is a must I want to see more covers of songs, that would be really interesting to see. Um, Rogue Mode from The Last of Us Part 2 Remastered also looks really interesting, and I hope it's good, and if the devs do include that in the third installment in the series, that would be great. Alright, well, those are some of my ideas for a third installment in The Last of Us series. I know right now, AAA games are either really good, like Baldur's Gate 3, Resident Evil 4 Remake, or they're pretty trashy, like uh, Golem. I don't know if Redfall was necessarily a AAA game, but Redfall, um, the day before, I think that was a Kickstarter game though. So, um, hopefully it's going to be a good game if it does ever get made. Um, it, may, it would make sense for it to get made, they left the story off in a really good place to continue on. That's about all. See ya.